Hey guys, I hope you're doing alright. My name's Mark Gallagher and you probably know me as a musician for the covers and the originals and the collaboration videos that I put out. Uh, today I just kind of want to talk about relative pitch. So now I just want to tell you some funny-ish stories about my experiences with relative pitch and what it means for me. In my high school choir, we used to sing the song Blue Moon in G major. Uh, at rehearsals, um, the teacher would play a G, which we would sort of tune ourselves to before singing the song a cappella. During the times when we sang on location and we didn't have a piano nearby, they used me as the tuning fork. The conductor would say, Mark, give us a G, and I would go, G. The choir would tune to this and then do the song. I should have given them an F sharp instead, just to fuck with them. That would have been fun. In high school, for our prep for a music listening exam, we were taught to identify chords as one, four, five, etc. During a mock test or like a, a, an exercise, she played the song We Are Young by Fun, and I identified the chords as F, D minor, and B flat, which are the chords. And she went, Mark, no. I'm like, they are the chords though. They are the chords. I can hear it. I can hear it's those chords. And she was very like, Mark, no. My teacher and I used to get in a lot of quarrels over stuff like this, and I'm really sorry now, but at the time I was fuming. I was at a jam night one night and they've got a bit of a loose feel, you've got house band and then interchanging musicians and, you know, you kind of just agree on a song and you just do it. One lady came up and said she wanted to sing the song Valerie, I asked her what key she sang it in, she said she didn't know because she wasn't that way inclined. Normally this would create a point of contention for musicians, I just said, just sing the opening line to me please. It must have been hella weird for her, but I just said, no, seriously, just sing the opening line. Well, sometimes I go out by myself. And I just, F sharp. Well, sometimes I go out. I could hear, okay, this is the key of F sharp. Tell the band Valerie in F sharp. And away we went. And the jam went well. Speaking of advantages of relative pitch, any jam night I go to, because of my sense of pitch, I can identify the key of the song, I can identify the chords being used. I don't need someone to tell me what the chords are as the song is going, I can just hear it and play along, and that's fucking wonderful. Learning songs, generally speaking, is really easy for me because I have to listen to it to know what the chords are. I don't have to look the chords up. And then usually um, I can just audialize and go where I think it's logical to go. I once did a gig in Keswick and someone requested the song Thunder In My Heart by Leo Sayer. I hadn't heard this song for about 10 years, however I could audialize the song, I knew, I memorized that song and know what it sounds like in my head and I took educated guesses at the chords and it worked. In season one of BBC The Voice UK, uh, Scottish singer Nathan James sings the song Living On A Prayer and he finishes it with a high note that he describes as a top, top C and it's actually a B flat and I still lose sleep over it sometimes. At my local Sainsbury's, the beeps on the tills are at the notes F, C, E flat and G and they remind me of the song uh, Blinded By The Light by The Weeknd. One question I had about relative pitch in preparation for the video was, can it be learned by mortals like me? And the answer is yes, it's kind of doable. I alluded to before, there are some of those videos that are like learn perfect pitch in 10 hours and it tells you a note and it plays you this note in multiple octaves. And that is a way of learning it. I'd say start off with simple notes. Let's take A. This is an A. This is an A up the octave. Teach yourself that this note, this set of frequencies, this quality this mm, a sing it to yourself a and it's doable that you can reproduce this in future if with enough training for my ukulele playing audience who are mostly like in uke jam circles think about the songs we're doing think about how often you hear the c chord being used think about how often you hear the c chord in the first place Think about this, try and familiarize yourself with the sound of this chord. And get to a point where someone can play that and you don't have to see it, but you know based on sound that that is a C chord. I would say it's doable, but my ears are different and I've grown up having different ears and listening to music a lot differently than most other people. So I can't say for certain. Anyway, guys, that's it for me on relative pitch. Uh, I 
sort of explain what it is, what it means to me. If I've got any other sort of stories that come to mind when I think about it, I might do another video that just sort of follows up on it. If you have any questions about relative pitch or perfect pitch, just leave a comment below. I'm very happy to sort of answer questions on this relatively new and not really touched upon topic. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon for their generosity during these trying times, but especially thank you to Advan Bever, Brad Indicott, Charlotte Pelgen, Dagmar Richter, Frank Purple, uh, Joe Gigapardo, um, Jonathan Piercy, Catherine Perrin, uh, Nicole Ringer, um, and Tib Magnuson. Gosh, there are so many names. But thank you so much. If you want to see more videos like this, or my covers, or my collaborations, and things like that, you can uh, firstly like my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mark Gallagher Music, uh, and you can also head over to patreon.com slash Music to make your pledge and get access to a bunch of exclusive content. My, my name's Mark Gallagher, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you stay safe and well. Cheers.